There's yttrium, ytterbium, actinium, rubidium, boron, gadolinium, niobium, iridium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and bismuth, chromium, lithium, beryllium, and barium. Welcome to the past HSC exam question video. In this video, we're going to cover all of the multiple choice questions from 2001 to 2010 from your past HSC exam papers. What I'll do first is, I'll, in a second, I'll bring up the actual questions. I'll go through them one by one. You get about five seconds to pause the video. Once you've paused the video, attempt the question, and when you're ready, just press play, and I'll go over the actual answer. So I'll read the actual first question. It says, which statement concerning galvanic cells is correct? A, oxidation occurs at the anode. B, they're also known as the electrolytic cells. B, the cathode, sorry, C, the cathode is assigned a negative charge. And D, an external power source must be present. So pause the video and attempt the question. Right, so I'm back. So the actual correct answer was oxidation occurs at the anode because whatever is at the anode will always lose electrons. Now, B was incorrect because it's not called the electrolytic cell, it's called the electrochemical cell. C is incorrect. The cathode is assigned the positive charge, not the negative charge. And D is correct, incorrect because an external power source must not be present. If everything is there, the anode, the cathode, then it will all go by itself. You don't need to have an external source present. So this is the second question. I'll read it again. I'll read the question. A student performed three tests to investigate the relative activity of metals. In each test, a metal strip was placed in a solution containing ions of a different metal. The results are shown in, di in the diagram. So we've got the three diagrams. Here we have metal X, which is this one, and we have metal Y deposits onto metal Y. These ions are inside the solution, and they deposit onto this metal. Metal X, Z, we have in the second diagram. A metal Y deposits on Z, so these ions will go onto the metal. And the last one, we have metal X and Z ions in the solution, but nothing happens. The question is, what is the order of activity of these metals based on these results? A, X is more active than Z, and Z is more active than Y, and so on and so on. So again, five seconds to pause the video and attempt the question. And once you attempt the question, I'll go over the actual answer. Right, so I'm back. So for this one, what you need to know is you need to know that the more active metals, more active metals are, are likely to lose electrons, and the less active metals will take those electrons. So less active will take. So for this one, you can look at the actual, so this already the correct answer was actually uh, this one. This one's the correct answer, D. Um, so for this one, you need to look at, in this case, metal X gives two electrons, or gives, gives electrons, and Y takes the electrons. And the way we know that is because Y deposits on this actual thing. So Y2 plus, this ion, takes these two electrons and becomes solid Y. And the solid Y we can see is the deposit. So here, Y is less active than X because it uh, takes these electrons. And that's less active in the middle. Same thing with this one. Y is also less active than Z because it takes electrons from Z. So we know that Y is already definitely the least active metal. So we can say um, this is here, either it's D or A. Now for this one, we can see here we have no reaction when we have Z in solution with the X metal. So Z does not take electrons if we have the metal X. So we know that Z must be, because it, does not, so it doesn't take these electrons, therefore it has to be the more active metal. So we know that Z is more active than X. Z is more act, is most active, Z is more active than X, and X is more active than Y. So D is correct. All right, so next one is four metals, P, B, X, Y, and Z, were connected in pairs and the voltage was recorded. These were the, the actual pairs, and then the voltage was recorded. So negative terminal we have lead, positive terminal we have X, voltage was 0 0.35 volts. Negative terminal for a second go was Y, and then PB is a positive terminal, voltage was 1.1. Negative terminal for the third one was Z, and positive terminal was lead, PB, voltage was 2.6 volts. It's asking, what is the order of increasing ease of oxidation of metals? 
five seconds to attempt the question, uh, to pause the video and attempt the question. And I'll go over the actual answer. Right, so I'm back. So for this one, what you need to know that the actual correct answer is this one here, D again. Now I'll explain why. Oxidation is loss of electrons. So you need to find out which one is the most likely one to lose electrons. And you can do that just looking at this actual diagram. So here we have the negative terminal, which is the anode. And the positive terminal is the cathode. And we know that if we have a value here, that means there was actually electron flow. So there was electron flow from lead to the positive terminal, to X, which means that lead was oxidized and gave it to X. And that only occurs if the negative terminal of lead has a higher oxidation potential than the positive terminal. So in this case, we know that lead is definitely has a higher oxidation potential than X. So that's why X is, the, is in this case, less has less oxidation potential than lead. And here we can see again that Y, you have oxidation occurring at Y, and those electrons flow to lead. And the same thing happens with Z. Z, we have electrons flowing from Z to lead. And we, the way we know that is we have a voltage. So we know, first of all, that X is the least active. So we have, it's going to be either C or D, because X is the least active. We know that lead is the second least active, because they, for Y and Z, they all flow to lead. And then we can find out which, one's the, which one of these two is more active by looking at the gap between. So they're all both testing against lead. And the higher the number, the higher the oxidation potential for the actual metal. So in this case, for X and PB, we have 2.6, whereas for Y and PB, we're only at 1.1. So um, Y is less oxidation potential than X, uh, Z, and Z has the highest oxidation potential. So D is the correct answer. This one is diagram A shows a dry cell, diagram B shows a lead acid cell. And then we have these diagrams, and we have the green things are the things you need to label. One, two, three. And which of the following shows the correctly labeled parts? A, one is anode, B is cathode, uh, two is cathode, and three is negative terminal. B, one is cathode, two is anode, three is negative terminal. C, one is an anode, two is cathode, three is positive terminal. And D, one is cathode, B is anode, three is positive terminal. Can you get five seconds to pause the video? All right, so I'm back. So for this one, the actual correct answer was B. And the reason why was because in this case, we you only need to know one, either the dry cell or the lead acid cell. And if you look at the dry cell, this carbon, which in this case is a graphite rod, graphite rod with manganese, dimanganese, the graphite rod, then we have carbon being the cathode, because that's the cathode for a dry cell. So one is cathode. Two, which is that zinc for us, zinc for the dry cell, is a zinc anode, is this part is the anode, so two is anode. And here is negative, and here is positive. So the electron flows from negative to positive. So three is the negative terminal. So B is correct. Right, so this is next one. An electrochemical cell is set up as shown in the diagram. We have an aluminum electrode here, copper electrode here. We have aluminum ions 3 plus solution for the aluminum half equation or half cell and copper ions for the copper half cell connected by salt bridge and your, your actual wires. So these are the observations. So what are two observations for this electrochemical cell? A, a reading was shown on the voltmeter and in the beaker 2 the solution became darker blue. B, in the beaker two, the solution flew. Sorry, in beaker two, this blue solution faded, and a reddish precipitate formed on the copper electrode. C, a grey precipitate formed on the aluminium electrode, and in beaker two, the solution became a darker blue. And D, electrons moved through the voltmeter, and a reddish precipitate formed on the copper electrode. In five seconds to pause the video and attempt the question. All right, so I'm back. In this case, the correct answer was B. So because in beaker 2, this, the blue solution faded and a reddish precipitate formed on the, the copper electrode. So in this case, we actually have copper 2 plus in the solution. 
And because electrons flow this way, they will flow from aluminium to copper. The aluminium is the actual anode, copper is the cathode. So copper gains these two electrons. So copper goes, grabs these electrons and becomes solid copper. And the way we know that is because we have, we have the precipitate forming. The precipitate forms on here, so you can, you'll have these copper ions coming out. So that's correct, precipitate formed on these. Plus, in PQ2, the solution faded because here we had these copper ions inside. But over time, more and more of these copper ions, which were these ones, came out of solution and became solid copper. And that makes the actual solution fade in color because these copper ions have moved onto the actual copper electrode. So this one's correct as well. And you might have been confused with this one. This one sounds almost correct, but it's also wrong. Because even though this is correct, and this sounds correct, electrons move for the voltmeter. They do not move for the voltmeter. They move for the wires. Nothing flows for the voltmeter. It just flows for the wires themselves. This is the next one. The diagram represents a cell in which two metals have been placed in solution containing their respective metallic ions. The metals are connected to a voltmeter. Which of the following combinations of metals will produce the highest reading on the voltmeter? A. Tin and zinc. B. Copper and zinc. C. Copper and silver. D. Magnesium and lead. You need to use this diagram or this table. I have it attached in the actual descriptions to be able to answer that question. So you get five seconds to pause the video. Right, so I'm back. So the actual correct answer was magnesium and lead. And the way we know that, we have to look at the actual distance. They, the further they are apart, the better it is, the more it will be produced. So if you look at here, we have magnesium, which is mg here, that's so minus 2.38. And we have lead, which is somewhere around here. PV is minus 0.13. So it's minus 0.13 plus minus 2 point, I think it was something like 3.8, something similar to that. I'll show you the next closest was uh, copper and zinc was quite far as well, but they're not as far. So we have copper, which is here, 0 0.52. Actually, we take copper 2, so that's 0 0.34. And then zinc is here, so minus... 0.76 so minus 0.76 plus 0.42 now that's the difference of 2 all up and this is a difference roughly 1.1 so this is further apart than this and these were the two which had the furthest distance in general so we know that um, the highest voltage will be produced by magnesium and lead which is the top one Next one is, some reactions of metals Q, R, and S are given below. Metals Q, R, S, and how they react in, in air, water, and hydrochloric acid. So in air, it burns, Q burns to form met metallic oxide. R reacts slowly to form metallic oxide. S reacts to form metallic oxide. Q, in reaction with water, reacts, to form, reacts with steam to form hydrogen. R does not react. S does not react. Q, reaction with hydrochloric acid, hydrogen is formed, R does not react, S, reaction with hydrochloric acid, hydrogen is formed. So that's your table you're given. Which galvanic cell will produce the highest, the greatest voltage? And you have these different combinations of electrodes, which are from here, and then you have to answer that question. Again, five seconds to answer that question. Uh, five seconds to pause the video. All right, so the correct answer was C. And the way you would know that was because you need to look for the highest voltage is again, if you have, if they're the furthest apart. So furthest apart gets us the highest voltage. Now here we have Q. Q burns to form metallic oxide. R does not react slowly. So burns for Q, R reacts slowly and S just reacts, it doesn't burn, it just reacts. So the highest one, and you can look at the other ones, it gives you the same kind of information. Q is the highest, that's number one. Uh, S, so it reacts, it reacts but doesn't burn. So this is the second highest in terms of how reactive it is. And R reacts slowly, so that is the least reactive. So if we have the least reactive and the highest reactive, 
both in the same electrode. We're going to produce this to the, the highest voltage because they're furthest apart on that table. Right. So the correct answer was C because Q is number one and R is number three, furthest apart. Last one, the diagram shows a galvanic cell. We have metal M here and zinc here. Which of the following metal is M? So which of one of this one? Acting as the anode will produce the lowest theoretical potential for the cell. A calcium, B copper, C iron, D manganese. And you will need to use that table to answer that question. Five seconds to pause the video. I'm back. So the correct answer for this one is D. And the way we know that is because it has to act as the anode. So it has to act as the anode. And for it to act as the anode, it has to actually have a lower reduction potential than zinc. So lower reduction potential than zinc. And so we look at that table. We have to look at the number of it being lower than zinc. And we can already eliminate copper and iron that way because they're both above manganese, uh, above zinc in the reduction table, and only calcium and manganese are, are have less. So we have zinc here, minus 0 0.76. We have copper here of plus 0 0.34, and that is above, so that eliminates copper. So the only ones below them in this reduction potential table are calcium, which is minus 2.8 and manganese which is minus 1.1 and it has to have the smallest theoretical, it says the smallest, it has to be the closest to zinc, so zinc is 0 0.7, manganese is 1.1, so that's 0 0.4 away from each other, whereas zinc is 0 0.7 and calcium is minus 2.8, so that's a lot further apart. So the correct answer for that was manganese. So I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.